Raichu is a topic which I think, at least for me, uh, is of importance, and that is energy from the desert, prosperity for all. Let me see where I am. By far, the most serious challenge of our times is poverty and hunger in the poor countries on our earth. Take for an example uh, the help organization CARE tells us that alone in the Sahel in West Africa, 10 million are exposed to hunger. And even more presently, 5.4 million are starving in Niger. And we are sitting here and talking about whatever. Of course, there is very little they can do. For instance, here you see they gather the wood and they burn it in their homes at a very, very low efficiency. So a lot has to be done to improve this situation. It looks even worse if we take into account the, the population increase. The poorer, the more children. Let me very shortly explain this diagram, which I have to show first. You see on the horizontal axis the standard of living. You see on the right blue axis the energy. And you see that countries with poor, poor countries have no energy, and rich countries have plenty of energy. And they are rich because they have energy. And at the same time, if you look at the red line, this is the birth increase. That means if you have no energy, if we are poor, the only way out is children. Today, seven billions live on this earth. Billions is in German Milliarden. Out of which only one lives in prosperity. In the year 2050, there will be nine to 10 billions if all of them require an acceptable lifestyle, the energy demand will multiply. We need an immense additional energy source. We need, not an, we need an energy revolution. There is only one source, in my opinion, which can satisfy worldwide prosperity by, by energy, and that is the sun. But not here, in the cloudy and densely populated northern hemisphere, no, in the desert, which are today the poor countries. Infinite desert with a yearly solar radiation more than double of ours, an unexhaustible energy source, a fractal of these deserts, can cover the present and future energy demand, of course, by use of suitable power plants. Let me have a look at this diagram. So you see at the left upper part, the, the solar intensity of the place. You see at the right lower part, the poor countries in blue. And we see that those countries which are poor are those who have the majority of solar energy. And if you go to the map at the left down, there you will see that I plotted little circles. And these circles show that if we cover this circle part with solar power plants, we can satisfy the world energy demand. The world energy demand. This is, of course, crazy. And nobody will think about that. But it is to show that we have a chance to get as much energy as we want from the deserts. And I think this is a unique chance. Uh, permit me to tell you that these little circles, you see these red circles, which define the size with respect to consumption, that I had this already. Oh, where's my... Sorry. 
that I have written a little booklet, How Much Desert Does the Car Need? A Plateauier for an Intensive Research in Solar Energy in August 1989. So what I'm telling here is 23 years old or 30 years old or even more old. Permit me to say amongst us that the name Desert Hack, which is presently advertised, is right, is definitely is right and important, but not at all new. So it is high time to collaborate with these solar countries and to develop solar power plants, and this is the key, which they can build and thus pay themselves with own resources and labor. I take as an example, if I have time at the end, I will show you in more detail a bridge we did, we did in India. In this way, only by indigenous construction, the client said, I can afford this bridge only if I can build it myself. And he did it and he brought into uh, foot thousands of families. So it is high time to collaborate with these solar countries and to develop solar power plants, and this is the key which can be built indigenous with own resources and labor. This yields a double profit, cheap solar electricity, and infinite number of jobs. Exactly what they are lacking, as shown by the conflicts in Egypt and in other countries at present. These are not religious conflicts. These are conflicts for survival. These are conflicts for labor. After having thus covered their own demand, they can export their solar energy by well-known transmission technology and with little loss to the northern countries, to us. So, so solar energy from the desert is the ideal approach for the poor countries to become members of the world economy to the advantage of all, because we as well take profit from the import of a clean, cheap, and inexhaustible solar electricity, and at the same time from a huge new market for our product in these multi-billion countries, thanks to their new and permanent income, their new prosperity. So they can afford buying our goods uh, by, uh, thanks to solar energy income. On the other side, I don't want to be unfair, but I must say it, on the other side, producing solar energy here with our bad weather and limited space and with immense subvention can be it's considered to be unsocial, egoistic, and irresponsible with respect to these poor countries. Every energy kilowatt hour we do spend here, uh, they can replace by solar energy, but of course in long distance. There may be the day where we can happily waste energy with the good feeling that feeding families in the solar countries. So what we need are large-scale solar power plants which can be built and operated in solar countries, indigenous on their own, as said before. There are today three or four types of solar thermal power plants, the Stirling system, the central receiver system, the parabolic trough, and the solar chimney or solar updraft tower. This sterling looks beautiful and is interesting, but I think at the moment we must exclude it because it would, of course, serve only decentral and small quantities. The central receiver tower <coughs> is definitely one of the two systems which, will be, which are already pretty successful you have these heliostats around the tower, which concentrate the sun to a top, uh, to the top. I don't know. Whether, yes, to the top, where the, and they take the heat down to a conventional power plant. So it's a 
solar heated power plant. And this is, has been done before, recently again in Spain, and there is no question that this can be further improved, and that is one of the possibilities. But it is one of these technologies which may be not applicable to developing countries because they are still too complicated. And the same is true for this, what is called the solar trough. This is a semicircular uh, trough with a concentrating on a concentrating tube and which then does the same as before it drives a standard power plant. And the advantage is that it has been very successful that it is built in large quantities. I'm happy to say that my office has participated very much in the developing in these uh, systems. There are some disadvantages, for instance, that reflecting system can only use direct radiation, that at least at present they need cooling water. But this is a technology which, in my opinion, for high-tech countries can be very useful. The solar updraft tower, as shown here, in my opinion, uh, is also a, a very important and, in my opinion, even the most important approach. You see here a combination of three standard technologies, a greenhouse, a chimney, and turbines, which are combined in a very simple way, which you can easily show that with the increase of the tower or the increase of the roof, the efficiency uh, increases. I can show that we have done in the 80s a prototype in Manzanares, uh, supported by the research ministry at that time. You see the glass roof, which we built at that time, I must be speak. We, 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 we also went for indigenous construction. That means we employed people from the place uh, to, to bring labor to them. Uh, you see that the turbines are at a circle around the tower and not one single turbine, but these are details. You see, and this is, I think, very important or very interesting, that we can place water bags underneath the roof. They heat up during the daytime and they release the heat at the nighttime, and so we have a 24-hour constant energy production. And this is to show that this indigenous has also to do with the materials. Basically, a solar updraft tower consists of glass and of concrete. That means we need a glass factory to the, to the right, and we need a concrete factory to the left, and a, a cement factory to the left. The only addition we need is labor again, and with that we can build a solar updraft tower of large scale, and we can show that with uh, towers of about 1,000 meters and roof of some kilometers diameter, no problem because the desert is so huge. We can go into large scales economic solar, edu uh, solar fabrication. Here you have a list which Dr. Weinreiber, my colleague, just gave me, where we have a comparison between the cost per kilowatt hour for the different systems, and there the solar updraft tower doesn't look so bad, and I think it can be even improved. So what we need is a, somebody who really says, I want to do it, we can do it, we can, of course, we will never uh, try to have the world energy consumption com completely from the desert every kilowatt hour. We do not spend this the cheapest one, so we must be, uh, but this is, a, I think, a very important and useful contribution. But the question, can I have two minutes or is it finished? I thought I should show that to you because this is this, is this bridge in India in 1974. I'm that old. Uh, the client, the Bangladesh, uh, the West Bengal government invited me to Calcutta and they said we need a bridge over the Hooghly River which must have at least 500 meters span and which must be at least 60 meters above water level. But the main condition is we must be able to build it ourselves. We cannot afford to buy this bridge in Japan or in Germany. We must do it on ourselves. And that means, unfortunately, that we have steel, but it cannot be welded, for instance. So if you apply steel, you must do it with riveting. That we said, this is middle age, and we left. 
But then, of course, with this, and this is the surrounding of this bridge, so you must imagine where, where you are. And we said, well, I'm sorry, we cannot do that. You see, the, the present, at that time, the present state of the art for a cable state bridge was a box of, of steel blades, with stiffening rings like that trapezoid. And this technology was, for instance, applied to the bridges in Düsseldorf at that time. And uh, these are, of course, thousands of kilometers of, of welding, and this had to be excluded, and therefore we decided for riveting. You see, at the top you have this simple welding, and you have the riveting, and you see how it works. It is middle-aged, we thought, and then we developed a, a bridge type which uh, suits this approach, so we have longitudinal girders and cross girders, a simple grid where we suspended it with cables, and then we see the side where the pieces are lifted up, and you see here a man sitting with his saw and cutting the formwork for an area of 40 meters by 1,000 meters. You can imagine how many families we fed with alone doing this by hand and doing the formwork by hand. And uh, here you see the, the, that we replaced the, the anchorage of the cables here also, and you see the thousands and millions of rivets, but these are thousands and millions of pieces of bread, you must always imagine. And this is the source of energy which was used, and that was the unbelievable star charcoal, which we use for our uh, barbecue, and, uh, and there they applied it to this bridge. And this is for me the key f photograph in my life of, of, of this part. Uh, that it, the idea is of this charcoal is not only that it is there, sometimes it is permanently available. And that is the importance. If you, go, if you want to go into industry with your energy, then it must be permanently available. And I think this was the key to this bridge in riveting and I'm proud to say that we had no problem at all to do it. It is successfully built. And there are today other bridges, like the Tinkau Bridge in Singapore, or other bridges which follow this composite deck, which was developed for a developing country. Sorry, thank you very much. Thank you.